Welcome to the Kit Stop for Schools video, which is designed to show how to find the dynamic friction in different setups of our hydraulics kits. This is important because students will need to use their knowledge of dynamic friction to compensate for the friction losses in their own kits and tests. This is one of a group of videos related to our hydraulics kits. Links to our other videos are included in the description below this video. Let us begin by first defining a few terms. In physics, the term fluid covers gases, liquids and plasmas. For the work with these syringes, the demonstration should only be done with an incompressible liquid, such as water. In these activities, the friction associated with these low-cost plastic syringes is a significant factor and needs to be compensated for if students are to identify and measure the principles which you wish to demonstrate. We recommend introducing the terms and concepts of static and dynamic friction. In most of these tests, the static friction is considerably higher than the dynamic friction. This graphical representation of static and dynamic friction reflects the behaviour which we observe in most of the situations with these syringes. Here we have a simple system set up for holding different sized syringes. We can connect the syringes together in whatever configuration we wish. We trust that most schools will have a set of small weights which students can use to place on top of the syringe pistons. Disc shaped weights have proven to be most useful. We here during this demonstration have used multiple numbers of $1 coins and we, we do not recommend this for use in a classroom. Here we are going to measure the static friction losses when we want to use a 20mm syringe to drive a 60mm syringe. We are just going to load 20 coins into our container for our first trial. Twenty five coins, thirty coins. We have learned that thirty four coins will just move the syringe. Here we are resetting to test with thirty three coins. It's not moving, but we know that it did with thirty four coins, so we conclude that for this setup, static friction equals thirty four coins. Next, we're going to establish the dynamic friction for this setup. The dynamic friction, as you will recall, is once it starts to move, it will keep moving unless the driving force is below the dynamic friction limit. I'll just get it started. There it is moving. What we're looking for is the minimum number of coins which will keep the syringe moving. So our procedure is to keep reducing the coins until we are one below the threshold of movement and the syringe stops. 24 coins. 24. As you can see, with 24 coins, when I stop pushing it, the syringe also stops. So the dynamic friction appears to be 25 coins for this setup. We'll do a quick retest with 25 coins. Yes, it is again moving, but only just. We are right on the dynamic friction limit. This is testing for the dynamic friction limit using a 5 milliliter syringe to drive a 20 milliliter syringe and applied to a lift which is acting like a long lever. We trialled 10 coins first but that failed. Next we tested with 15 coins. This setup is going to test for the dynamic friction limit using a 5mm syringe to drive another 5mm syringe and applied to the tip truck which is acting like a shorter lever.
This is just moving because the driving force is now at the threshold of the dynamic friction for this setup. So that's it, 21 coins. Here we have a 5mm syringe driving a 20mm syringe, which is itself driving a single stage scissor lift. We are looking for the dynamic friction limit in this design. If I just get this started, it keeps moving. We have left this long clip in the video so that you can see how slowly the syringe will move when you are close to the desired limit. Now that's the total limit of the 5mm syringe. We won't repeat all the videos of all the different tests which we've conducted, but here is a summary of the main results. Please be careful with these results and only use them as an indication of what your students should expect to achieve. There is a lot more information which we would wish to share with you on each of the different kits and models. That detailed information is in two separate videos, but please allow us to give you just one cautionary hint. The two-stage scissor lift models, which have been built by different students, have been found to exhibit as much as a 50% variation in the apparent friction limits. This is one reason that we suggest use the two-stage lift with your advanced students. We hope you are interested in these different activities and we would encourage the investment of the teacher's time to view the more detailed videos pertaining to each model. Kits for each of the models are available from us, but we are also very happy to work with individual schools to establish what they want and what they wish us to package for their individual needs. We know that many schools already have supplies of various resources. For pricing, availability and more information on any kit here, plus any of our other kits which we offer, please visit our website or drop us an email. Links to our website and our email contact details are all listed in the description below this video. Thanks for watching this. We look forward to hearing from you and working to deliver the best resources for you and your students' needs.